Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the fish room. Uh, today's video, I thought I'd do an update on just some of the tanks and uh, mostly kind of a little uh, fish room hack, something to help you guys out. For everyone that's been following the channel and just the fish room tours, um, I've been using these uh, hang on breeder boxes for quite some time, uh, kind of on and off whenever I need them and I don't need them. They're just really nice to have around. Um, basically what it is, if anyone doesn't know what they are, uh, you're pumping air in this uh, tube to pump water up. It pushes water up comes into this tank. Uh, you can put fry, whatever you have. I have some baby plecos that are hatching out right now. And then it comes over here to a little screen and then it goes back into the tank. Uh, so it's basically like a hang on filter without any of the meat to it. Uh, just like an empty hang on the back filter. Um, but it's driven by an airline, which is really convenient for fish rooms where we have our central air systems. Uh, like right up here, I got my Gemco pump and I don't have to do any extra work I just gotta run an extra uh, airline tube uh, down to power this. I don't need uh, any electrical, anything additional really. Um, pretty self-explanatory there, uh, but super helpful in the fish room. But one thing that I've had people complain about, and it's something that never really bothered, bothered me till recently, at least I never noticed it, um, but my fish room's been relatively quiet. Um, I actually have lids on all of my uh, tanks now where my sponges are going, uh, so you don't hear as much of that splashing. I uh, have a lot less tanks now. You hear a little bit of humming from like the pump, um, but it's nothing too crazy. We are like outside this room. Uh, so if we're over down there on the other side of the basement, I don't hear anything in here, but I have to tell you the last few nights I've heard this thing plunking away when I'm watching TV and it is like, it is very noisy. So basically I just wanted to show you that. Uh, this is real simple. I'm not gonna go too crazy with this, but listen to how loud this is. I just put a little sponge in there. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but uh, long story short, I mean, it never used to bother me because, I mean, I'm not like sitting here 24-7, kind of like a breeding for profit with my fish room. Uh, but now I'm spending a lot more time in the fish room, working on my planted tanks and kind of just enjoying the tanks more. Um, and this is super noisy. So whenever you get these, there there is a little nozzle here, which is nice to actually direct the water down so it doesn't just shoot out like that. Uh, and I have this turned up pretty high and I have the tank filled up really high too. Uh, whenever your tank is a little bit low, like say your water level is down here, uh, you're going to get that noise and you have to turn the air up even higher. Uh, but on a bigger tank, anything over like your tank gown and stuff, and this is actually going to splash everywhere so I'm going to put this back on temporarily. Um, but make sure your water level is not too low because that's going to take a lot of air to get the water up there. But I got the tank pretty full right now. I have a strong airflow on there. Anything less than this, it's not really giving me enough surface agitation here. Uh, so what I want to do basically is I want to keep, I found some uh, pleco eggs in, down in this tank. I have some plecos breeding. Uh, they actually kicked the eggs out of the tank and they're just kind of sitting on the bottom. Uh, so instead of taking them out, putting them in a container and do a air stone, I wanted to actually have it uh, not do like daily water changes on it. Uh, I wanted to have something where it's going to filter water in from the tank it was in. Um, I had like 50% of them hatched. Some of them did fungus up because they sat in the bottom of the tank for a little while. Uh, and this wasn't giving me quite enough flow. Kind of getting back to what I started with, with uh, how to make these more quiet and also still be uh, useful for your purposes and just kind of give an update on the fish room, to be honest. All I really did is I had a little cutout. Um, you can buy like big squares of uh, any type of sponge. You want something really porous that's not gonna clog up. But basically I was trying to find a way, and this is super simple. Uh, I just kind of shoved it in this hole right here. That is your down. Kind of like your downflow. So as soon as you do this, you're going to get rid of all of that clunkiness. It's going to get rid of a lot of the noise. It's still going to let water come up and fill this area. Uh, now the next problem, at least for me, if you have some fry in there, this is going to help a whole bunch because you don't want them to get splashed around and now it's not as loud, which is nice too. Uh, this is going to add a little bit of a pre-filter so this will stay cleaner. Um, but for me, if I'm hatching out some baby fry, um, and just initially I had this over here so the babies wouldn't fall back out. That's another thing you can do. Uh, definitely buy some sponge, it's gonna help enhance this uh, product. These little hang on the back uh, breeder boxes. Um, I think they're really good for raising fry if you're gonna take fry out or eggs, anything like that. Uh, smaller fish, if you need to quarantine, not quarantine something, but separate something for aggression. I don't think they're really that good for buying like, uh, or putting like a pregnant female guppy in there and having fry. I think they normally get too stressed out and they usually eat the babies. Um, it can work, I just think moving the female usually stresses them out and it really works like maybe one out of three times. 
But this is gonna help me out a whole bunch for my purpose of getting rid of some of the noise. But now my next problem is I want some more airflow here. Uh, so this is really only if you kind of have this fish room set up or you have a bunch of airline and air tubes. Uh, you can still do it, just not as convenient. But I wanna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a air stone and actually these skinny no clog ones, not no clog, but it's like these, uh, I get it from Gemco. It's a more sleek, I guess, air filter, air stone. I guess the bigger one would be nice, it wouldn't pop back out. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on now, I'll hook it up to the central air. Now we're gonna get more of that flow. We're gonna get constant new water from our tank that's gonna be cycled, so we don't have to worry about having ammonia in this and doing water changes. Um, I think this is gonna be kind of a perfect uh, Pleco grow out container for me for the future. Uh, Cause I think this was always kind of missing something and I'm kind of just on a whim today working with some stuff, but I think this is gonna really help out where I can still get uh, new water constantly pumped through here, get rid of the noise, but now I also can get some surface agitation. Uh, let me go ahead and plug this air line in. We can see what it looks like. So yeah, we're pretty much set. And as you can see, that only took me like 30 seconds. It took me longer to actually uh, measure the hose, cut it, and uh, pull up my camera, do a video, than to actually hook this up. Uh, which is, this is definitely for a person with a fish room. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing. It's also just temporary. Once these fish get a little bit bigger, uh, I'm gonna put them back into a grow out tank or put them back into the community tank where they can raise up. Uh, just give you guys some ideas, and this is not anything that's uh, super complicated. I'll probably have to dial this air back a little bit. Um, but this is kind of gets the best of both worlds where you have kind of a uh, hatch container where you have uh, also the water's heated. My room's heated, but if you had a heated aquarium and you want to just pull some fry or pull some eggs, try to hatch some uh, rams or some angelfish, just kind of pull a rock out that they spawn on or a leaf, uh, you can put them back here. You're going to get constant new water. And then you also can throw the air line in there to get more bubbles in there and kind of uh, get some more flow because you're not gonna get crazy flow with this, and if it is, it's gonna to be too much, it's gonna suck them out, or just push them to the side. Um, this way you can get some new water, and then throw the air stone, kind of a two for one. I feel like both those elements of uh, raising the fry or hatching the eggs uh, are just missing a little bit of an element, and this kind of combines the two and kind of makes, I think, like the ultimate hatchery slash grow out uh, container. Anyway though guys, uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys out. I thought it was pretty cool. I just thought of it right now and I want to see how it actually worked. Figure, figure I may as well get it on camera, show you guys what's going on. Uh, just while I have it, walk around the fish room a little bit. I was looking at this tank just a few minutes ago. Uh, these were all my hold back and grow out uh, plecos. I got some uh, reds getting a little bit bigger there. That might be a female. I've had a long fin super red in here for the longest time. I've been watching them. I just saw them a minute ago and it's actually turning to be a male. I can see his bristles finally developing. I can't find them now, but it looks just like this one here. Maybe a little bit bigger and he's got the bristles showing. So pretty cool. He'll be able to breed in the next month or two if I can spot him, I'll show you. But uh, as I was working down there, I could uh, kind of look up and I saw him. He was hanging out on the moss and he kept working his way down. He must have uh, dove down to one of these caves, which is pretty cool. Um, but this tank's doing pretty well. I have the red guppies and the red plecos, kind of assorted plecos in here. I've been doing a lot more of some of the moss. This is a cool little carpet thing I saw online where it's basically just a, like a wire sheet and you tie it down with some yarn or some fishing line. So far it's doing pretty good. Uh, I've been working a lot with these uh, moss rocks. They get pretty dirty, but that's really just because my tanks are dirty. Uh, if we look at the ones below here. This is only like a week of growth. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when I set this up. You can check out that video. Uh, it's probably two or three videos ago where I uh, kind of rescaped this 55 gallon tank. Uh, these shop lights so far are doing really well, kind of uh, some cheap lighting. I'm growing that uh, wisteria, water sprite in this tank. Uh, the moss is doing really well so far. I can see a lot of new growth. For sure this uh, light's getting the job done, but you can see, I, got, I mean, I gotta do more water changes over here and just kind of uh, do a gravel vac. Uh, you can see the plecas swim around the bottom and they will kind of pile up all the debris and stuff in the tank. So that gets caught up in the moss a little, um, but that's not a problem at all. It's actually gonna probably help the moss grow. It's gonna give like a fertilizer on it, but as long as it doesn't block too much of the light uh, and easy enough, I can just pick these rocks up, turn them upside down and shake it off and uh, net that stuff out. So that's pretty easy, but I like this tank doing well. Obviously you guys know I had some breeding going here because we pulled the eggs from this tank. Finally got this tank to the right of it, all cleared out. We took out all the acrylic yarn and I'm almost, 
acrylic yarn free in the fish room right now i still like it but that stuff was literally like four or five years old uh some of it was it's super old uh, and it kind of gets to, to fall apart and deteriorate but it probably had a really good bacteria system established in it too uh, so it helped the tanks out a whole bunch but right now i've got uh, plenty of filtration there with the sponge filters they're plenty established um, but this tank's real easy i can just net out any of this debris here uh, but i'm probably going to add some of those rocks and some caves for these guys to potentially breed as well and we can get some moss growing in there uh, jump into the tank above uh, we did take out a large portion of acrylic yarn over here we still have a lot on this right hand side um, i'm not sure if i'm gonna take it out or not all of this moss is kind of growing on top of it so we'll see i don't really want to destroy all that moss that's kind of rooted to it and it'll float around but slowly i'll keep pulling from this make it thinner and thinner over time so i don't kind of pull off too much and kill it um, but i've been pulling from this to do my uh moss rocks and i'm definitely enjoying this tank uh, lots of baby guppies the wisteria is growing pretty well uh, this is like one solid piece so you know you normally have like a bunch in there and they're all kind of separate if i pull on this this all grew from one sprout i didn't put like four like this is really cool actually i haven't moved it like this um, but I want to take a trimming off of it. Look how thick this is. This is probably, I should go back and look at the video when I first added it. Uh, I wasn't on this, but I remember just the date uh, I was doing a video and I did this the same day. Didn't record it, but I put a section maybe like this big in it and it has just taken off. And it, I don't even know if it had roots. It was just like leaves. Like if I just cut this off right here and I can't even see any roots, it was maybe this big over here. And now it's just massive. It's really cool that it's all combined. Uh, it's not like you have 30 different little pieces like duckweed, uh, which would be thousands of pieces, but it's kind of cool that it's one large uh, piece here. Got my Glossostigma in here. Uh, just kind of left to go since I uh, grew it from seeds. It's not really dying or growing. It's kind of just staying alive in there. And I'm not really trying to do anything with it, but I'm just kind of curious uh, to see how long it can live in there by itself. But I uh, just lifting the lid up it's like getting bunched up over here on the right, which is really cool. Not to worry, I'll pull some of that out, spread it out soon enough. Uh, you don't want it to grow too, too much uh, without pulling it away from it, because that's how you're gonna help remove the nitrates from your tank, actually doing trimmings from your plants. Not a whole lot going over here. The shrimp are still doing pretty well. Uh, there are tons of scuds in this tank. They're like destroying the moss. Uh, you can see where it's starting to grow. If it, I have so much glare today. But you can see the moss is like trying to stay alive and grow back in the middle, but uh, you gotta feed them real heavy because those scuds will just kind of take over and uh, eat on your moss. Uh, they don't really kill plants. Like over here, the java fern and stuff, doing great. They're not really bothering it. Um, but the moss, they will kind of start to pick at when they get hungry. Uh, so it's gotta feed more. Or if you had any fish at all in this tank, uh, they would eat all those baby scuds. I think I have like one baby guppy in there. Uh, and they'll eat the real tiny ones so they don't get too out of hand. But that's not a problem. I kind of knew that was gonna happen. This five and a half gallon fluval tank is kind of just a catch all right now. Uh, I put some uh, some stem plants in here. I put that little cup of Glossostigma in here. Uh, it was growing some algae. It's almost too bright to focus on it. But I put it in there and the guppies and the shrimp kind of picked at it and got rid of it in like a day. Uh, so this tank's doing pretty, pretty good. That carpeting plant, it keeps floating away and I'm just netting it out and throwing it away at this point. Not really a big fan of it. Uh, so if you guys saw that video, that wasn't my favorite plant. <laughs> if you go back, I wish I would have done just moss in this tank or any other plant, but uh, I saw it for like 10 bucks. It looked super cool and it was worth a shot. I think it definitely can work and it could have worked. Like some spots it's growing, but I actually started pulling it out and I just put some wisteria in here, a couple stems, um, see if I can get those growing in there. Uh, eventually I'm gonna redo this tank, maybe even move it to uh, upstairs, but that's how this tank's doing right now. Uh, those plants wouldn't stay rooted was my biggest concern with those. Uh, behind it, we got the 55 gallon tank. Did a water change on it because I'm moving water to set up another tank for a customer. Uh, so I'm actually giving them some of my cycled water. I'll do like 50% of my water, 50% new water. Give it a few days of run. Um, add some uh, cycled media in there and add with a few fish, but that's why the tank's drained down there. This is definitely getting rescaped soon. Uh, my buddy Lewis from Cichlidscape, we're gonna go check him out. Uh, he's got some really cool planted tanks. He's gonna help me do it and he's kind of Keep reminding me when we're gonna do this tank because I'm pretty excited to do it. I gotta get a nice, a nice light for this tank, get a new lid. I actually put some TLC into this tank. I did just buy a canister filter. I'm probably gonna put it over here. Uh, just to test it out, I might even just cycle it and then set up another tank with that canister filter. So I kind of just have that on hand. 
I uh, say I have a customer that wants the tank set up, I can take my own cancer filter over there. Uh, they kind of pay for it, helps pay for itself. And meanwhile, I get to use the filter. So I get to kind of test out some products and then hopefully I can set up tanks faster in the future and just kind of give them a nice filter. Down here, I'm testing out these uh, two lights. I'm not really testing them out, but I bought some plants uh, just today because I'm setting up, like I said, I'm setting up that tank. Um, but I had to reschedule. I got like 20 gallons of water here in buckets. I was gonna take over today uh, Probably gonna end up doing it next weekend because something came up But I bought some plants and I'm just throwing these lights on for now See if I can get them uh, growing a little bit more uh, Before I take them over and just kind of keep them alive meanwhile um, But I'm gonna do a review on these lights possibly in the future. They're pretty cool. Uh, it's from Aquion. It's the Like the ultra bright or something that's a little bit higher end. It comes with a internal timer Which is pretty cool. I did it on the remote here. It comes with this remote uh, it's not super, super simple. I had to read the directions how to do it, but once you read it for like two minutes, you figure it out. Um, it's cool, it has like a 30 minute ramp up time. Um, so you can't really see the light on this, but basically you set the time of day and then there's whites, blues, and then like greens, or there's like an all around color. Uh, you set timers for all three of those. So you can set a timer at like nine o'clock and then the whites at 9.30 and then one at 10. Uh, and then they'll actually ramp up a half hour before you set the time. Uh, so they gradually come on and come off so i'll probably do the blues on like 15 hours a day something real long so there's always some light on the tank especially at night and then just do the whites for like seven or eight hours um but that's kind of i'm getting a little bit too far into this video i want to do a little update i want to show you that little uh fish room trick on the hang on backs super simple but something i didn't think about i've been running those for on and off for a year or two now uh, they're really nice, but right now, like having it not like clunk, 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 clunk every like two seconds, uh, it's really nice. So uh, I do think it needs the air stone without it. I think it's a little bit too slow um, for hatching eggs and doing that with like plecos or rams or angels. But once those hatch out there, um, especially for guppies and like slower moving fry that don't really need that much, that much oxygen or movement, uh, it'd actually be better without the air stone. So if you want to throw some guppies in there and not listen to all that noise, uh, I think it's a great little modification down there. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment below. Um, any of that stuff, I love hearing from you guys, and it doesn't cost you anything to like the video and follow along. I uh, definitely appreciate it. I got some big plans. Once we get to 10,000 subscribers, uh, I'm going to take the channel to kind of the next level. I want to do a lot more of nice scapes in my tanks. I plan on setting up a 90 gallon aquarium over there. I'm holding out on you guys till we get to the 10,000. Uh, I think it's gonna be really cool. We can do salt water or fresh water. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we're getting my salt water tank back there, back on schedule. I've got some things for it today. Uh, we'll do some updates and get some more fish for that very soon. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the actual tanks and enjoying the fish uh, than as much of the breeding aspect. I'm gonna do both, um, but I'm gonna enjoy it. That's my biggest like personal goal for 2020 is to enjoy my tanks more. Uh, I enjoy breeding the fish. I enjoy having a nice aquarium. So I'm going to find a nice balance in between. Uh, probably not going to sell as many fish online. It's really, on me, it's stressful and kind of a hassle to ship fish. Uh, it's cool and I like that I can reach other people and kind of get my fish to other people, make a little bit of money. But it's a lot of work and it's definitely kind of frustrating uh, or like nerve wracking, sending fish and then waiting to hear how they do and stuff and doing everything the right way. You never know exactly what's going to happen and why. Uh, so I still do it, but I'm definitely cutting back on it. I'm not gonna have as many fish available on my website. Uh, if you check it out, it's more so just for my aquarium service. And I do sell my fish locally. If you're closer, you can just email me and we can uh, meet locally. I don't have to worry about shipping these guys and the water parameters will be a lot closer. So that's just kind of an update on the fish room, guys. I just wanna check in today, uh, do one of my weekly videos. Thanks for watching, guys. If you made it to the end, comment below that you made it. Uh, let me know what's going on. Let me know what your tanks are, how your tanks are doing. Uh, I've been telling people recently, email me pictures of your tanks. I love seeing your fish in your uh, your tank setup. Someone was texting me the other day and they were showing me their ram setup. It's super cool. I love seeing other people's tanks and other people's fish. Uh, so go ahead and send that below. If I get a bunch of response, maybe I'll throw them in the, one of my videos coming up. Uh, but check out these videos here on the screen. I have another video coming out in the next few days. Thank you as always for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.